we're here at Box Day Bristol and I am joined by James Strachan from Red Hat. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us, James. Um, can you tell us a bit about your role? What do you do? I work at Red Hat. Um, I'm an engineer and I work on the upstream open source projects. So I work on things like uh, a project called Fabricate, uh, which is tools for working with Kubernetes. I do a little bit of work with Kubernetes. I work on a project called uh, OpenShift. I work on tons of projects really, Apache Camel, another one called Hotio. Basically lots of upstream open source projects that lots help with Red Hat middleware. Very lots topical cool and stuff. buzzy things. Yes. Especially the cool Fabricate. Stuff. Yes. And yes. what have you been talking about today? Today I was mostly talking about Kubernetes, which um, is one of the most exciting projects I've used in the last uh, three decades, throughout my age. Um, it, it, for me, it kind of changes everything about how we develop and run software. Um, it's basically a container as a, a, as a service kind of thing where you can just run your applications. Um, and Kubernetes takes care of keeping things running. It does load balancing, high availability, scaling. You just write little processes, chuck them into Kubernetes, and then you win. It's, it's truly awesome. And is that what you've been kind of outlining for people today? Yes, I, I talk quite a, a lot, probably too much about that today. <laughs> uh, uh, it was fun though, uh, I enjoyed it at least. Uh, yeah, um, I, I've been using Kubernetes for about a year, and for me it's, it's, it changes everything. I've been writing software for quite, quite a long time. Uh, for me, it changes the whole game of what it means to develop software and, and take it live and run it. It's, and how do you find using like, Kubernetes? Because I think one of the things people have fed back to us is that it can be a bit complicated, or to yeah. get into it can be a little bit dense, as, a, yeah. I suppose, as opposed to Docker, where it look, they make it look like it's so easy. Yeah, the, the Docker guys do make everything look really, really simple, and, uh, and, and they do an excellent job there. Not I, to turn I, Kubernetes versus Docker. No, 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 I mean, they, they both work together uh, uh, really well. I, I, I've had quite a few whole, hallway conversations about the same thing lately. I think the hardest thing about Kubernetes is explaining it. I think part of the problem is, as a Kubernetes person, you have all this knowledge in your head and you think, let's, ex let's share it with everyone. So you talk about all these terms in Kubernetes like pods and replication controls and kubelets and all this kind of stuff. I think the first time you hear that, you get bombarded with stuff and it seems really, really complicated. I think it's maybe better if I could do my talk again, I would probably just show an app, like a Java app or a Node app, and say, look, it's running on Kubernetes. And you don't have to know all this terminology and this weird stuff. Understanding how Kubernetes works, I think, is really useful. I and mean, developers should, if you're using it, learn the terminology eventually. But I think bombarding the poor user first time they hear about Kubernetes with all this terminology can be quite confusing. So I think the hardest bit about Kubernetes is explaining it. But part of the thing that's amazing about Kubernetes is how it works. So it's one of those kind of things. Do so you bombard maybe. the user with terms that are confusing, or do you just say, oh, it's magic, it's just amazing, and so just if, trust me? If you're kind of on the fence about Kubernetes, maybe you'd be better yeah. jumping in, taking it for a spin, than kind of bogging yourself down in the details before yeah. you really get your I, hands on. I, I think if I could do my talk again, I'd start by just showing how a Node.js or a Java app could just run on Kubernetes and not worrying about any of the implementation detail or how it all kind of works. So people could kind of see, oh yeah, I can just take my stuff and just run it on Kubernetes, and then gradually go through how it's all kind of working under the covers, whereas up to now, most talks I've done and, and I've seen other people do is we talk about all the principles and the abstractions and the thing, and, and I think that can be slightly mind blowing at first to, for the first first time you hear it. It's a bit too much uh, technical content before you actually do anything yeah. useful. I suppose if you're at the Kubernetes con, though, then uh, yeah. obviously very right you, KubeCon. You, we'd hope you'd know the three or four terms <laughs> you need to know if you go to KubeCon, but uh, I think the first time you hear Kubernetes, we maybe shouldn't talk about the the internal bits and bobs. And yes. obviously you're working on a lot of projects at Red Hat, but can you tell yeah. us about any things that you have in the pipeline, any things that you're excited about um, or people should look out one for? One of the things I'm probably most excited about since Kubernetes is um, basically continuous delivery pipelines so that anybody who's developing software, whether using Kubernetes or not, it's obviously better using Kubernetes, but even if you're not, um, we've been working with a bunch of projects. It's OpenShift plus Fabricate plus uh, something uh, called Jenkins. Um, mostly we're, we're joining Jenkins and Kubernetes together nicely inside uh, OpenShift so that you can do continuous deployment pipelines. So you can uh, take some source code and it will automatically build your Docker image. It will then provision it in a, a development environment. It will then automatically run your system tests, your integration tests, your load tests, your SERP tests, your performance tests, and yada, yada, yada. And it'll move that binary image through all these different environments and eventually we'll go to staging, pre-production, and production with human approval along the way, which um, we've all been doing this stuff with string and rope and shell scripts and, and, and wiring it together by hand. We now have a way of just automating. The, the combination of Jenkins and Kubernetes is, is amazing, quite frankly. We can automate the entire software production pipeline um, completely automatically, which really, uh, 
I think, raises the bar. I, I could weep if I think of how long I've spent just configuring Jenkins and Nexus, never mind anything else, you know, deploying and staging and doing ultimate testing. So I, for me, that's quite exciting that now we have a way of really delivering software automatically using essentially two open source projects, Jenkins and uh, Kubernetes, which were integrated together in, in OpenShift. And I, mean, I think the Jenkins story individually is quite interesting, isn't it? That it was obviously the yeah. cloud because it was just one of many things yeah. and it is now their core thing that they're pushing and that community yeah. has just really, really grown. It's a huge community. I, I love Jenkins. And Jenkins, Jenkins is going through an interesting transition at the minute. Um, like Jenkins it effectively standardizes continuous integration. So now pretty much this started like a decade ago. Now everybody does continuous integration, which is cool. Hardly anybody does continuous deployment, but when you talk to people, most people kind of want that. That's like the next step of, okay, I've done my automatic tests and stuff, now let's take it to the next level. Let's, let's move the software through development, testing, staging, pre-production, production. production. Um, Jenkins Pipeline is part of Jenkins 2, which focuses very much on that piece. What we've been doing is taking Jenkins Pipeline and merging it with Kubernetes so that the two work really, really nicely together. Um, and we're releasing that in OpenShift later this year. So. We're getting the best of both worlds. We're getting the best of Kubernetes and the best of Jenkins and raising the bar for all of us. So that's really. the Red Hat Kubernetes, CloudBees community. Exactly. So, the, so in terms of open source, it's, it's Kubernetes, which is Google and Red Hat and lots of other people. Jenkins is Jenkins. And those are the two core open source things. And then we're packaging it together in OpenShift, which right. is another open source project. Continuous, and deli product. A continuous delivery singularity is on its way. Yeah, it's fascinating at the minute how, if you look at like the commit logs on, like, on like Kubernetes, for example, you see... Uh, uh, Red Hat guys sponsoring Microsoft guys to commit to a Google project to help Azure yeah. with Kubernetes. It's, it's a really interesting dynamic right now because we're all working basically together on effectively the same platform. Kubernetes can run on your data center, it can run on Azure, it can run on Google, it can run on Amazon. It's kind of an amazing world right now. It's also kind of interesting that Cloudbee started as a PaaS and now we've effectively combined Jenkins with the perfect PaaS or, or CAS. Uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, there was that um, Jenkins continuous delivery as a service that Enterprise yes. launched, I think, two days ago. Two days ago, well. which is really cool. It's a shame they went with Mesos. <laughs> if I could go back and kind of be in that meeting and say, try Kubernetes. Uh, Mesos is cool and all, but uh, well, Kubernetes is cooler. Maybe the architecture is open enough that they can tweak I, that down I the line. I hope they adopt more Kubernetes in the future. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Mesos. I mean, they've, they've done great jobs, but uh, I. I'm a huge Kubernetes fanboy. Kosuke yeah. Kawaguchi, if you're listening. <laughs> yes, yes. Pleasure. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us today. My pleasure. And, and Vox has been awesome. Oh, fantastic. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers. Thank you.